Right, I'll see you later. See you in a bit. Bye. Well, good evening. Welcome to another video. I'm going to address the elephant in the room straight away. I'm not coming to you from the UK today. I'm on the small Mediterranean island of Cyprus. Well, it's not that small, really. It's a pretty big island. I'm here on a family holiday. We're actually visiting family out here at the moment. A lot of my wife's family live out in Cyprus, so we're here visiting them uh, for the first time in a few years, actually, which has been quite nice. And I've just come out this evening just to catch golden hour, just before we all have a meal together. So um, I have no idea what I'm going to find this evening. So. I've thought of a little thing to talk about instead. So not too long ago, uh, Thomas Eaton, a very popular YouTuber, uh, released a video um, reviewing the new Hasselblad camera. Uh, and one of the things he said about it is that it's not for normal people. It's a very expensive camera. Uh, and he's absolutely right about that. It's nearly 15 grand's worth of kit he was using. Uh, he said himself that it's just too much for most people to be able to afford. So. What I thought I'd talk about today is the other side of that, how to easily make photography affordable. Now, if you're a beginner looking to get into photography, it can be quite intimidating when you start seeing the prices of things. Uh, when you look at cameras, lenses, tripods, camera bags, traveling, it all really quickly mounts up uh, and it becomes a very expensive hobby very quickly. Even if you go for the absolute basic gear, it's still quite a lot of money, more expensive than most hobbies, I would say. And I think that's a real put off for a lot of people that would really love photography and who would be really good at it. I think there's a lot of people out there who think, oh, you know what, I'd like to try photography. Uh, but when they start researching how much it's going to cost to get into it, they don't even start. And I think that's a real shame because photography is a hobby that can open up so many opportunities to you. Uh, and I think a lot of people really do miss out on that. So. I'm going to share one of the ways that I kept it affordable when I first started and meant that I could do it as a hobby, uh, despite the fact that I really didn't have much of a budget at all when I was first getting into photography, which is probably true for 95% of people who want to get into photography. Man, check out this view behind me. We're staying in a really rural part of Cyprus, which means that uh, it's really quiet up here, coming just on a lane past the villa that we're staying in and the views are epic. I'm absolutely not sure if I'm going to get any good photos tonight, but that's not why I've come out. I've just come out to do enjoy my hobby of photography, uh, which is more often the case than not anyway, as you know with my videos if you've watched regularly. But I would say that the absolute easiest way of keeping photography affordable is just buy what you need only when you need it. Now there are so many things that you can buy with photography, loads of different sort of gadgets, trinkets, and a lot of these things are really not necessary at all to be a good photographer. I've talked about that subject in a different video, uh, but in this one, I wanted to talk about the absolute basics that you need because you can always be spoilt for choice with what you buy when it comes to photography. Now, I'm not going to be one of those YouTubers who tells you that you only need to start with your phone. That's advice that was given to me when I wanted to start photography and I really hated it because I wanted to feel like an actual photographer when I started photography. Uh, you can start with a phone, that's fine if you just want to practice a little bit, but I know that most of us ultimately want to be starting with an actual camera. Now, here's a bit of advice for you. Pretty much any entry level camera from the ma major manufacturers that you buy nowadays is a very good camera. Modern technology has come so far now that even the entry level cameras can produce really high quality photos. So just start looking for second hand cameras in fairly good condition, doesn't have to be in perfect condition, uh, that have come out in the last sort of five years and you'll probably end up with a good one. And now do your own research, I'm sure there's probably some bad ones out there, but I'd say that almost all cameras now on the market are very good and you can produce very good images with them. So all you need to start with, if you want to feel like a real photographer and keep it affordable, is a camera body and a lens. Just start with a kit lens. Even the kit lenses that come with modern cameras are pretty good now these days. They're generally quite sharp and they can produce some good images as well, as well as the body. 
if you start with that, which is what I started with, just the camera and the lens, I didn't even have a good kit lens. My kit lens was rubbish. The sharpness was just awful. And I eventually upgraded that. Uh, but that's a point that I want to come on to next. Man, the south half of Cyprus is a really strange country. When you uh, visit like the villages and that sort of thing, it really does feel like a properly Greek island. Uh, it's very Greek. People speak Greek, there's Greek signs everywhere, the buildings look Greek. But when you look at it geographically where it is in the world and you look at the landscape, then it, it, it's almost Middle Eastern, especially this time of year because we're in October now. When you look at it, it's just absolutely barren with all the grass sort of burnt off. It's situated to the south of Turkey, to the north of Egypt and to the west of Israel. So geographically it's almost Middle Eastern I suppose because it is an island in the middle of the sea it's a little bit different but it really makes for some cool landscapes. I've visited here a few times because we've got family here and I've always really enjoyed the photography here because it's so different to the UK especially Wales where I live. Um, it sort of gives my photography a new lease. Been able to take pictures of those different things. I talked about traveling for photography in a video a couple of weeks ago, uh, which a lot of us don't often get to do, especially if you don't do photography as a job. So when you come on holidays like this, it's a great opportunity to do it. Uh, and yeah, if you can just go out for just one evening or early one morning at sunrise or sunset, then you've really got a good opportunity to get some great photos that are really different to what you've already got in your portfolio. But anyway, I wanted to talk about upgrading when it comes to our kit because that's a very expensive part of photography too. I'd really recommend that you look for secondhand gear. There's some really good sites that you can buy secondhand gear from. If you just Google secondhand photography gear, you'll find all sorts of companies that sell them. There's even some people on YouTube who get sponsored by those sorts of people. I'm not, this isn't gonna be a sponsored video, don't worry. <laughs> but genuinely, buying secondhand gear, I can say pretty much all my gear except for some filters and my tripod and maybe my camera bag, they're all secondhand. I can safely say that most of my actual photography gear, lenses, bodies and everything are all secondhand and I've had really good results from doing that. I can, you can get some really good deals on secondhand gear uh, and in really good condition as well. Uh, this zoom lens, for example, this was secondhand and I bought it in like new condition, uh, but I got it for about a third of the price less, even though it was in like new condition. It was almost box fresh when I got it. I couldn't see anything on it other than probably the packages had just been opened. So yeah, it's a really great way of keeping it affordable by not splashing out on brand new gear if you can get away with it. A little bonus tip for you is that a nice view doesn't always mean a nice picture. There's a cracking view for the top here, but there's not really any compositions. I know that's nothing to do with what I'm talking about in this video, but this is a good demonstration of that. I feel like I'm on top of the world here, but I've got my zoom lens on trying to pick out different things. Uh, but tonight's more about having a conversation with you with a camera in my hand as if, you know, like a couple of mates going on a walk or something. It's nice to do that sometimes. Come out without the intention of getting a good photo. Just coming out with your camera just to have a go with it and get yourself somewhere nice. I was just going to sit by the pool this evening, maybe have a couple of beers, but come out, enjoyed a nice sunset, have a conversation with you guys. What more could I ask for? Anyway, the final bit of advice I would give you when it comes to keeping photography affordable, the easiest way, is by not buying things that you don't need. This is something that's happening more and more in photography. Because kit is so good now, and entry-level stuff is so good, different manufacturers and different companies that aren't camera manufacturers are continually producing stuff to make photography maybe more convenient or to look cool. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's the same thought, sort of thing that's been going on for years with all sorts of other uh, different businesses uh, and products. Uh, 
Uh, but for example, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the photography show in the UK, which is held in Birmingham. And I actually met a couple of you there. It was really good to chat with you and see a couple of people. Uh, thank you for coming to say hello. Uh, but while I was there, I bought this. One of the only things I've ever bought that I absolutely do not need for photography. <laughs> it's just a gimmick, but I really like it. Uh, it's a little Peak Design wrist strap. Uh, once again, not sponsored. Like I said, I'm not sponsored by anything in this video. I just want to chat about it. Uh, yeah, it goes around your wrist. It's got a little magnet in it, so you can wear it like a bracelet if you want to. Um, and then when you want to use it, you just dangle it down. It clips onto these little red things here that you put on the side. They're a really popular company, Peak Design. Uh, they're not can camera manufacturers, but they do stuff for photography, like bags. Uh, my clip that you see me using often in my videos as well, that's made by the same company. They make really nice stuff, but I wouldn't call any of their stuff necessary to make you a good photographer. The stuff is quite pricey. Uh, this was 27 quid, more than I would usually spend on something I don't need but I just really liked it. And there's also nothing wrong with that as well. If you see something you really want and you can afford it, get it. It's part of the fun of enjoying photography. And I, it's, I like it. I like this strap. I like the color. I think it looks cool. Uh, it's, it's nice to use to have uh, for hanging down when I haven't got my clip with me like I haven't tonight, enough to hang my clip on. Um, but it doesn't make photography affordable. I do this as a job now, photography, which means that I can afford to spend a little bit on stuff that I don't need because I have absolutely everything I need in order to take good photos. I've got my camera, I've got four lenses that cover all the focal lengths and a couple of fast lenses as well. And that means that I don't really need anything else to take good photos. I don't even need to particularly upgrade my camera. I may do one day because I want to, but I don't need to. And that has meant that photography has stayed affordable for me. And it's a hobby that I've been able to carry on doing, even through economically difficult times, like we're having in the UK at the moment. A lot of people are concerned about money. And it's really easy to just give up on your hobbies when money's a main concern, but it just saps the enjoyment out of life if your main concern is money. So if you can find a way of keeping your hobbies affordable and still do them even through economically hard times, I think that's a really, really good thing. Anyway, it's probably been a short video. I hope I haven't waffled on too much. I've tried to keep it brief. I do find sometimes that I do waffle on. Uh, once I get on a roll with having a conversation with you, I find it hard to stop that train, if you know what I mean. Um, so just let me know if I do waffle on at any point. Some people might like it, I don't know. But I find it helps me to stay conversational in these videos if I do waffle a little bit and then just cut out and edit it later but yeah like I said I hope it's been enjoyable and a little bit helpful if you've got any tips about keeping photography affordable uh, then please comment them down below to help others in the comment section and maybe even me because you know keeping photography affordable is important to me and my channel so yeah I would appreciate that anyway I might be home by the time you see this video so I'll see if I can squeeze in another video from uh, Cyprus or not but like I said I'm not committing to videos while I'm here. This is a holiday after all. I've just stolen an hour from my evening this evening to come out and enjoy my hobby that I love so much. Uh, but yeah, if you want to watch another video, then YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this one because I'm going to let YouTube decide this time. And I'll see you next time.